So now for position vectors, we don't have to talk about much because position vectors use the same mathematics, same math as for any other vectors. And of course, because we are in mechanics here, we started with forces. So we started with forces. And that is the first part of your homework, but we now take it to position vectors. And for that, of course, the same rules apply. So let's take a look at a three dimensional coordinate system. So here we have a positive right handed coordinate system. And of course, that means in this class, I have x, y, and z. And now I want to put a space somewhere random in the negative direction of the x axis and maybe even in the negative direction of the y axis. So to identify that, I need to, of course, provide reference points here a line that is parallel to the y axis, a line that is parallel to the x axis and y axis, and a line that is parallel to the z axis. And so let's say there is my point. So I'm going to call that P1. And now I want to have a secondary point, which let's pretend just for the purpose of this example that that is in the xy plane. So I have a plane here that is identified by these dashed lines. And now I want to understand what is the distance between point P1 and P2. And I'm going to draw that line for you as well. So just a line here that moves to this point, And that line is P1, P2, if you will. And how would you calculate the lengths? So the lengths of P1, P2 is really similar to what we've seen before. Nothing else than the difference between P2 and P1. So it would be P1 minus P2 or P2 minus P1, depending on how you really look at the system. But you can always calculate that using the initial points. Now you can have some interesting engineering problems that can be answered with position vector math. And one of my favorite one has to be the one where you have a line, this green line that is P1, P2, and there's a point on this line that is exactly midpoint between P1 and P2. And the question then would be, where would be the height of that point? So in the Z direction, for example. So let me visualize that for you. Let's say we have this point here. I'm going to call that P3. And the question is, what is the Z value? Or in other words, the height. of point P3. And you'd be surprised how simple the answer is if you ever have to calculate that. In fact, I encourage you to maybe even make up your own problem, put like some value here, put some value there, calculate the lengths, and then tell me if P3 is at midpoint. So midpoint between P1 and P2, and then tell me what is the height of that value of that point. And again, students often stumble on the math or like wonder about the math. But if you really think about it, you will be surprised how simple the answer can be. And I encourage you to use position vectors to answer such questions in your engineering career. It really can make things easy. Now, the math that we just used to calculate the angles can also sometimes be helpful when you calculate the angles between two lines in 3D space. So let's talk about that one as well. So let's say you have another 3D coordinate system that now houses two lines. 
similar to the ones that we just solved. So let's say I have a point here, P null, P null, and I have a random line. I don't even have to show you the coordinates of that line first. So I have a force that points in that direction, let's say, and I have another force that points in some other direction. And I'm gonna draw that in this direction. And let's say in reality, these are forces, but really what you wanna know is the angle between the two. So you wanna know what is theta between the two in the plane of those two vectors. And you can use position vectors to do that. So sometimes position vector math is used to identify angles between forces in 3D. And there's so much more you can do with position vectors, but those are probably the most important ones here for the purpose of this class. And so I'll leave you with that. This is all we need to know about position vectors and how we need to apply them, you will learn in the homework. And that's, I think, the next thing we should talk about. So let's move on.